Okay, so uh, we're here at Toy Love Camp and I'm taking a break out of playtime to make a little video for you. Um, these are our mountains, our beautiful mountains in the background. This is a beautiful studio we're getting to play in here at Finca Mia. And I want to address a question that somebody asked, a great question, about the, on our rhythm series and specifically how to stay with the music and the rhythm if you're, if you're going between the 4x4 four four fountain and turning the weaves, which is a video I made a little while ago, but I didn't address the rhythm issues in that. So the idea is uh, going between 4x4 four four fountain, turning the weaves, 4x4 four four fountain, turning the weaves, which can look so great because they look like the same move kind of, and you can be turning and turning, and then you stop, and the, the pattern just keeps going around you. Right? So it can look great, it can feel great, uh, but the, rhythmically the thing is that the 4x4 four four fountain actually has more circles, so to speak, than turning in the weaves. So if you look at, say, my orange poi, if I'm turning in the weaves, I'm going to do it the... The orange poi is doing two downbeats with the mountains and only one downbeat with you, with the camera, right? So it's going one, two, and one, one, two, and one. It's all symmetrical because if it does two downbeats on one side, it's doing two upbeats on the other. You don't need to worry about that too much right now. I'm going to show you a simpler way to think about it. But trust me, technically, turning the weaves only kind of has six circles and uh, the 4x4 four four fountain has 8. So if you're trying to stay with the music, what do you do? And the answer is always, or the answer is often forget about how many circles there are, find something simpler to count. So in both patterns, what we're going to count is up on one side, down on the other. And it's going to look like this. Up on the left, down on the right. Up on the left, down on the right. Up on the left, down on the right, up on the left, down on the right. And if you look, I'm counting my left coming down on the right and my right coming up on the left. Right? Right up, left down. Right up, left down. And I'm going to emphasize it a bit so you can really see. And also how it can bring out the way you move to music when you've got something count to count. The right, the left, the right, the left the right, the left. I think poi spinning is a lot more beautiful when there's some rhythm in the body and in the spinning. When you switch to turning in the weaves, you keep counting up on one side, down on the other, but I'm going to switch to, it has to become only my right hand that I'm following. So the moment I start turning, I go right, right, right up, right down, right up, right down, right up, right down, right up, Right down, right up, left down, right up, left down, right up, right down, right up, right down, right up, left down, right up, left down, right up, right down, right up, right down, right up, left down, right up, left down. So if you played with each of those and got into your body a bit, the feeling kind of up on one side, down on the other. Going between them and staying with the music is going to be very natural. Technically, you're speeding up the poi a bit when you go in, or if you watch me, I'm speeding up a little bit when I go into the 4x4 four four fountain. It's subtle and I do it, in, it's intuitive because I'm not really paying attention to that. I'm just paying attention to up in one side, down in the other, and I'll have to speed up a little bit to do that, but it happens without really thinking. But try to notice up and down, just the speed of the poi, right? It's got one speed here, and when I go to this, it's slowing down just a little bit. I don't need to think about that, because I'm just thinking about down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. So it all happens kind of on its own, and really, once you get each into your body a bit, you, you can, you'll stop thinking about the technique, and you can just think about the music. But if you never take the time to work out this technique, you might just never be able to move with the music. That's the thing. Is it initially you sometimes need to take a bit of technique. It's like in drumming. If you never do the head game where you're learning like the these funny new rhythms, 
you'll always be stuck on only the first couple rhythms. You'll never be able to get more complex in your spinning or in, or in your drumming. But drummers, once they're really good, they're not thinking about this. They're just, they're just like jamming out. It becomes natural, right? But you need to think to get over the, some of those humps. So try this. With each pattern first, find that rhythm. Um, right up, left down, right up, left down. Emphasize it, let your whole body move with it. You can stomp your feet. Right up, left down, right up, left down. You can jump, right up, left down, right up, left down, right up, right down, right up, right down, right up, right down, right up, right down. If you get loose into your body where your whole body's feeling the rhythm, once that's happening, you'll never lose it. That's like riding a bicycle once you're there. So put on some music that's got some, you know, really steady beat and play with that. And I bet you before long, you're seeing how you can go between those two moves, keeping your rhythm, moving with the music, and it feels great. So, Nick Wolsey reporting from Poi Love Camp. I hope wherever you are, you've got great people around you, because right now I've got great people around me, and I like that.